brave. We got her uh, dialed at 20, took one shot at 40, two shots at 60, and uh, 60 we hit dead on. So we're just jumping right to 100 yards and see if this thing does what as advertised. All right guys, today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the Axe Crossbow 405. Um, looking around, I don't see any review videos on YouTube yet for it, so we're gonna try to just go over the whole thing. And really, uh, you guys, if you guys are watching this video, it's probably because you wanna make sure to see what you're getting before you pull the trigger on that high dollar crossbow. So. We're gonna see, we, we all have like $300 crossbows um, right now. So this is this will be a big step up. And, and our question also is, is this crossbow worth four times the money? You know, is this, is this gonna be worth it? Um, so we're gonna go over and just so you know, like that's what we're gonna kind of be comparing it to is these uh, $300 range crossbows that we've had in the past. So I'd say apparently it's a Hawk crossbow scope, but it has the Axe logo on it. How'd you know they were made by Hawk? Does it say on the website? It says it on the website. Okay. Yeah. Hawk's a, a, a really well-known crossbow scope brand. So you set the feet per second of the crossbow and that gets you ballpark, but what's that that's doing? Because when you zoom in and out, it changes the distance between your uh, mill dots so you can basically set it up like if we were to switch arrows down the road to a heavier or lighter weight arrow you could adjust this scope you'd have to find where it's at but you adjust that and then your mill dots will all line up in other words a regular scope that you can't adjust your mill dots on the scope may be you know 20 27 36 you know they may be random numbers what happens to be on the mill dot good thing about these is you can adjust it so your mill dots will be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Um, good scopes. <laughs> all right so we just got this axe crossbow out of the box uh, we put a couple of arrows down range with it and so far i'm impressed with the speed of it and the accuracy out of the box step number one dial it in at 20 yards just right on the uh the zero crosshairs um <laughs> we're actually doing that as you see we had to put two targets up there and it's still almost blowing through two targets so it's definitely got some penetration with those really, really small diameter arrows but so step number one just dial it in like you would any crossbow um, and then step number two we're gonna set the elevation on the scope by adjusting where it says the feet per second on here and that's actually zooming in and out the crossbow and so we're gonna try that at about 50 yards and once we get that set then all the mill dots from zero all the way to a hundred will then be set for the correct um, elevation and trajectory with the speed of the crossbow and the, the weight of the cross bolts. That's how easy it is to uncock. So it's in the down position right now, the cocking slide, and it's attached to this heavy duty strap, nylon strap, nylon strap that cocks this bow real easy. And they're like it snaps in once and then you push it again and it snaps in twice and you have to have done that. I can show you on this one real quick. Yep, so Justin's going to demonstrate that part of it. So rather than having to draw the string back into a, the cocking or the trigger, this one actually goes down yep. and clicks on. So that first click was like real soft and then the second click was pretty loud. Winch it all the way back and this handle no, it doesn't come off, but you have a feature where you can undo that screw and clock it and it should never go anywhere. We're actually going to adjust this one up. That way it's out of the way for your arm. So that should never move. And then... So now it's out of your way. And these ones, you to uncock them. 
It's that easy. It's that easy. So that's a positive feature for sure is uncocking it. Well, and one of my, the things I like the, uh, the best about it is when you're cocking this bow, it, there's no reverse tension on it while you're doing that. So you can be halfway through it and stop. And this is not going to come loose and bust your arm or hit you in the face or whatever. My other $300 crossbow, it's got a cocking device that kind of mounts onto the back of the bow. Mm -hmm. And at any time, if you were to let go of that, it's going to and unspool. Yeah. And unspool and bust your not knuckles. Not that way. This is, uh, I've got it halfway back now. And you can, and you can cock that thing while it's up on a stand like that. Yeah. I think that's worth noting. That's, N there's not another crossbow that I've ever used that you can cock it while it's up on a stand like that. Uh, so your older generation can actually uh, operate this thing and it's not, they're not going to get hurt. And that's the reason a lot of them switch to a crossbow from shooting a traditional bow or a compound bow is because it's so hard for them to pull back. They're going to be able to use this uh, and it's going to be fairly easy to get pulled back and, and loosen because it's just that easy to decock it. And there again, even in the uncocking thing, part of the way and stop and, and it's not going to unspool and hurt you or hurt anyone and, and kid friendly too i guess if uh, if you want to look at that aspect of it yeah yeah so you can adjust that however to your heart's desire there um what else do we have when when you're cocking it back you can the safety will automatically come on to safety about halfway back micro diameter bolt really short and the knock actually engages the string like a regular bow would. So it's really- It actually clips on. Yeah, you can feel it click, which is one thing I don't like about regular crossbows with the flat knocks, as I'm always nervous if it's back all the way. There's a little ramp inside here that actually, the fletchings go into there a little bit, so you know it's clocked the right way. Yeah, you're not trying that's to, pretty nice. Not trying to guess if it's- The fletching, yeah. Sitting down on the rail and Show them, put an arrow in there right now. Just show them how like those fletchings engage with the. It won't go all the way right now, but they. Uh, yeah, but but you can see like the fletchings go inside that, so you can yeah you and see it if it's clocked. Don't correctly. spin and it's locked on there. It's, not like the little spring tension on the other ones that yeah. make me nervous. And the quiver is mounted very nice and flush on this. Nothing rattles. Like I every other crossbow I have, I've taken the quiver off. But this one, I would keep it on. It's very nicely mounted. Well, and I think the shortness of the bolts makes Helps that a that. whole lot easier as well. You're not dealing with something that's longer than what you're actually shooting with. Um, and uh, going to keep it out of the way and keep your hands safe while you're working on it. What? Um, so the other thing that we, we haven't done is like broadhead tuning and stuff. Um, that's, that's after you get it sighted in with the field points, but you can see this arrow rest is adjustable by these bolts up and down. So that means if your broadheads, if you want to tune your crossbow, just like your bow and arrow, you can adjust this up and down. Um, I don't think, I don't see where you can adjust it left and right. Um, but, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Um, I, don't, I think you can adjust it up and down though. Um, so they give you two different lengths of screws here. So you have the option of adding one or two butt plate extensions to where you can probably get another inch and a half out of it for a bigger guy. But yep. honestly, I'm six foot five and with it just how it is, it feels real compact, but I don't feel like crunched up where I can't operate it. It actually feels pretty good. So you guys said you're gonna end up leaving it how it is and not yeah. extending yeah. that, that, correct? That's exactly how I'm gonna do it. Uh, and, and we'll take it to the field and see um, how it does sitting in a blind and up in a stand or whatever, but I think I'll end up leaving it as small as possible. And they do give you sling mounts as well, which we'll put on later. So after shooting this a couple of times, uh, I actually expected this to be a little bit quieter. Um, uh, it's not substantially louder than anything else we've shot or uh, any other crossbows we're putting down range, but uh, it's just not as quiet as I expected it to be. Uh, at, the price point. at the price point for uh, you know what we spent to get these, um, I felt like it should have been quieter. Looking at the back of the manual at the warranty, uh, it says it's a two-year warranty from the date of original purchase, and uh, we've had some broken parts or pieces on some of the other crossbows, and Faraday's been great. Like, don't even question you. These are just send you a new bow. 
Well, that's pretty good. That's and they they do stand behind it. They always answer their phones. Yep. Um, that service is a really important part. You could have the best product in the world, yeah, and if the service sucks, service. forget it. That's right. It's kind so. of Amazon-ish, you know. Uh, we have a problem. We send something to them, and they take care of it. You know. I, I almost kind of. I'd rather have a subpar product with good service than the best Absolutely. product with crappy service. That's true. That's true. Anyway, the trigger is like a hair trigger, to me. Like it's very easy to pull with. N yeah, it does have a very light trigger. It's well, Forty yard mill dot. Ready? Uh, yeah. This is 60 yards, and all we did was found our zero at 20. Uh, got the zoom ring set to 405, which is what the feet per second of these are supposed to be. 40 yard shot was within a half inch, which this rest isn't like locked down, so that could just be the shooter. Probably is. So we're gonna go for a 60 yarder now. Wait. Oh, oh neighbors. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> Rogue. I know they saw it. They're like, what are we going on? So I'm gonna put the 60 yard dot right on the heart. I'll put two clicks of windage on it and uh, let Josh shoot it. Sixty yard dot right in the center. That's dead on. That little leaf was right in the center of the heart. That That's what I was there. aiming for. Just to get a little 60 more. yards, brother. <laughs> I, I don't know that I would ever shoot anything that far, but uh, I guess if you had the opportunity to shoot something you'd never seen before, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a long way. Uh, Should we shoot it at 80? I don't care. How about 100? Just go straight to 100? Let's do it. We're getting brave. We got her uh, dialed at 20, took one shot at 40, two shots at 60, and uh, 60 we hit dead on. So we're just jumping right to 100 yards and see if this thing does what as advertised. 100 yards out of the box. And so just so we're clear, we were, so 60 was on the other side of the swing set. Now we're gonna do a no cut walk up there. Does everybody believe you? Sure. I heard a hit. All right, guys, this is gonna be a no cut walk. I will, the only thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna speed up, fast forward the footage so it's gonna look like we're running up there. Okay. Well, and that actually makes sense because full disclosure, it was 97 yards on the range finder and I was holding right there. Oh yeah. So I'm still pretty dang impressed with that. And I would never shoot at a deer that far anyway, so. And that's, this is literally uh, like just right out of the box and a few ten, shots. Ten shots. We have not spent any time dialing it in at all. No, we screwed the scope on it and what made three adjustments on uh, or four, to yeah. get it dialed at 20 and then here we are and some of the adjustments for us not reading the directions imagine that <laughs> shocker so i'm gonna say i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the what you're paying for for that x crossbow is that accuracy and ability to get out there at distance right and and i think that's attributed to not only the crossbow, but that's probably why they are limiting you to their certain arrow and like they don't want their right. name. The other crossbows, we're using our own bolts and we're using, you know, different we're weights. different weights and they've 
I'm gonna guess they figured out what works good for for the most accurate right. bolt and the setup for their crossbow. And I, if I'm not mistaken, they said their engineering team's been working on this for quite some time. I think so. Uh, and all the comfort features of it. Um, yeah. Uh, for someone that doesn't hasn't carried a crossbow a whole lot, I've killed one deer with a crossbow, and that was just last year. Um, I like I feel safe with it, even safer than my PSE that I had. So, but for me, like, just honestly like i'm not gonna for me like hunting with the crossbow out of a log pile blind with my kids yeah like i'm not gonna spend that money on a crossbow like that because i'm like zero to 40 we're very very confident with the 300 dollars like right. the rocky mountain crossbows that we've been shooting mm -hmm. um now once you start getting out past there it seems like things start changing a little bit on those like you can have it dialed in to 80 yards one day and yeah, you can probably hit a paper plate. Right. You're not you're not getting as accurate as you know, we don't we don't really know yet, but this really seems to make sense. There's no flyers, nothing that's acting weird. Right. Whereas those other bows, stuff kind of starts acting weird a little bit when mm -hmm. you start getting out there at distance and right. you start overthinking it and this just Well, I mean everything makes sense. So. The compactness with the reverse limb is nice. So you can definitely sit in tighter places and maneuver yeah. it better in a stand so even from the log pile blinds with the kids with the crossbows that have the wide limbs on them mm -hmm. there's always like that that angle you can't get to because the limb's going to come and smack the side of the block the, the blind well, or something so you're limited my dad shot at that one and uh on public ground and he had never used the crossbow much he rested the limb against the tree branch and so, <laughs> <whack>. yeah <laughs> Um, it's lighter, I think, than yeah. it's definitely lighter. I'm I don't impressed know with the exact how light it weight. Is. We'll, I'll try to look that up and put that here below. But I'm, I'm impressed with uh, just the craftsmanship and all the features, yeah. and especially the out of box. Yeah. Uh, uh, like you said, we've not spent any time with it. Yeah, really. You know, the out of box performance for a guy that doesn't have um, six months to shoot it before you go to the woods. You right. get it out of the box, you get it dialed in, and I'm going to feel confident going to the woods with it here in three weeks when the season opens. So these crossbows, you bought both of these, but or John did, but this was like a Christmas bonus type yeah, thing. Yeah, that's, so this all, is that's a, how we a, ended a, up with an employment. These. Like this was the item they chose to to get for his business, and he's like, he's telling his boss, like, well, heck yeah, that that's a yeah, great bonus yeah. for oh, me. Oh, oh, twist my arm. Yeah. So we just gotta um, go put up a deer stand for him, probably. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to put up a deer stand, and if he kills one, we'll probably have to butcher him, <laughs> which is nothing out of the ordinary, but. But that's why we got our hands on these crossbows. Um, whereas normally, you know, we would probably still be stuck with those His, $300. Uh, to explain that situation, my boss is 70 years old. Pulling a, a regular compound bow or a traditional bow is just not going to happen for him. He played softball and has always been in construction his whole life. So uh, his shoulders and stuff are just wore out when it comes to that. And uh, he's wanted to get a high-end crossbow for the last two years. We've been talking about it. And, of course, business is real good right now. So... He decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on these, uh, especially with the love we get from Paradigm on yeah. them. Uh, and it was kind of a no-brainer for him. Yeah. Uh, and you get to write it off as a business <laughs> expenditure, which yeah, that's beside the point. But uh, still he's an older gentleman, and I think he'll, um, I think he's going to fall in love with it. Actually. Yeah, I, I just, I do love how it's just one complete package. Um, I'm, I had another thought on on the Rocky Mountains. I my back was hurting for a while there, you know, right, and it's still kind of coming out of it. So I was I was not I was not really able to put the cocking rope in and pull that crossbow back. It's kind of ironic, right? Crossbows are for older or crippled people, and here I am crippled. But I, because I'm because my back had an issue, I couldn't pull the crossbow back. So this one would work well the rocky mountain one actually has a has a crank that you mount you put on the back of it so i was using that but the thing is is that's detachable it has to you have to take it on and off to do it every time every time right. and so you like one extra a lot of carry. yeah and then so how many times do you think like i didn't have it with me when i needed to pull it back or i can't find it where did i put that yeah. right so or if you shoot out of the stand and miss and then you want to yeah talk again trying to cock a crossbow in a tree stand i've done it once and i wouldn't wish that is on nobody. very it's not fun it's nerve-wracking well especially like from you're gonna lounge, fall out and tree trying yeah so being able to cock it like this from a stand, I, that's a huge benefit yeah. as well. So you can't. It's not a rope you can lose. It's not a crank handle you can lose. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right on. there. Yeah. So that's I think in the end, for me, 
regardless of how good it is, it's outside of my budget. Right. But if I had the budget, I can understand now why it costs more and what the benefits are. Right. And if I had the money to get it, um, it's it's a it's solid definitely, choice. Yeah, I'd it's recommend definitely it. a high end product yeah. and uh, top of the line yeah. in the crossbow from what I've shot. And what I've I'm excited to, to get out and uh, do some hunting with it this year with right. you. Absolutely. Well, and uh, I'm excited uh, after I kill a deer with it and get it on video. I obviously intend on letting anybody in the group that wants to use it use it uh, sure. and, and go from there. So uh, we can get as many people as we can shooting with it. So the only thing we have not tested or t showed you guys on this yet, which you'll see in later videos, I'm sure is we got the field point on here. So what's gonna happen if we screw a fixed blade broadhead on it? Is it gonna plane or is it gonna fly good? I mean, I've all the other crossbows I've been shooting, typically I screw a fixed blade broadhead on and it, and it planes and it doesn't hit right. And I'm not going to readjust a scope to make my broadheads hit good. Um, so I just use like rage broadheads because it's gonna fly like a field point. So it'll be, interesting to see what happens yep. when you screw a fixed plate and on these and i'm gonna that, that's that's probably gonna have to happen for us in the next week yeah because we did have to wait this long to get our crossbows because yeah. of manufacturing and covid and all that crap that's been going on but uh that within the water all right guys thanks for watching if uh you guys like hunting fishing cooking uh any kind of outdoor videos like that uh make sure you subscribe below click that little bell button so you don't miss any of our videos and uh Leave us a comment if you guys have uh, have anything you noticed that we didn't notice on this crossbows plus minuses. If you've used yeah. it, uh, let us know because we're actually honestly interested in your experience as well. Right. Leave a comment um, and hit that like button. Thanks, guys. Hey, we appreciate y'all.